Hey guys, Mark here. I hope you're all doing well. I had a request to show you guys how to tie the box pattern knot. This knot is quite a unique one and it does require some patience to tie. Once you have tied it a couple of times, you will be able to do it much faster. This knot is covered in the book by Ron Edwards called Round Knots. As far as the supplies to tie this knot go, you're going to need three cords and I usually remove the inner strands out of these cords to make them lay flatter. One of these cords should be of a darker color and two should be of a lighter color. You're also going to need a mandrel and I use a 2 inch PVC pipe for this purpose. And finally, you're also going to need a lacing needle. With these supplies ready, we're first going to tie a 7 part 6 byte Turks head and then do the box pattern interweave. So let's get started. I'm going to start by using my darker cord, which in my case is going to be blue. I'm going to wrap around the mandrel, coming over the standing end, then wrap around again, and again come over. We're then going to take our working end, come under, and then over towards the left side. We're going to come around again. And now double up your standing end by going under over. We're then going to travel from right to left, going over, under, over. Then we're going to come around. And we're going to split these two cords here. We're going to start with an over then go under and over. We're then going to travel towards the left side, starting with an under, then go over, under and over. We're now going to double up our standing end one more time, so start with an under, then go over, under and over. Then we're going to travel from right to left, going over, under, over, under and over. We're again going to split two parallel cords. So these are the cords that we're going to split and we're going to start with an over, then go under, over, under and over. Then from right to left, we're going to go under, Over, under, over, under, and finally over. With this we have tied a 7 part 6 byte Turks head and we place our working end next to the standing end in order to complete it. I'm now going to work in some slack to make the knot easier to work with. I have attached a second color towards the right side of my standing end of the first color and we're going to start our sequence by following the cord to our right starting with an under then go over, under over, under over 
and finally under the chord on our right. We are now going to travel towards the left side and we start our sequence with an under again. So under, over, then under the three blue chords, over one, and then under two. We're then going to start with an under again, then go over, under, over, under, over, and finally under two in order to split a pair. We're going to continue from right to left. Starting with an under, we always start our sequences with an under, then go over and under three, which also splits a pair, then go over two and under two, which again splits a pair. We're going to enter the knot again with an under. So under, then over, under, over, under, which splits a pair, then over two, which again splits a pair, and under two. We're now going to travel from right to left. And we again start the sequence with an under, then go over, then under the three blue chords, basically going under four, then over two, and under two, which again splits a pair. We're going to enter the knot again with an under, so under one, then over one, under one, then over two, under one, over two, and finally under two. From right to left, we're now going to start with an under again, then go over one, and again go under the three blue chords, which basically means we're going under five chords. Then go over two, and under two, which splits a pair. We're again going to enter with an under one, then continue with an over one, then under one, then over three, under one, which splits a pair, then over two, and under two. Now from right to left, we're going to start with an under one, then go over one, then go under the three blue chords, effectively going under six, then go over two, and under two. We're now going to start our next sequence with an under one, then go over one, under two,
then over 3, under 1, which splits a pair, then over 2, and under 2. And we're at our last sequence with the second chord. And the last sequence starts with an under 1, then go over 2, under the three blue chords, basically going under 6, then over 2, and under 2. And to finish the second chord, we're going to go under 1, and place it on top of the standing end of the second chord. We're now going to start our work with the third chord, which I have attached on the right side of my second chord. I'm going to start with an under 3, then go over 2, under 1, over 3, under 2, over 2, and finally under 1. I'm now going to go on top of my second chord here, and enter with an under 1, then go over 2, and under the 3 blue chords, effectively going under 6. I'm then going to continue with an over 2, and then under 3, and I do not exit the knot on the left side, but stay just above the second chord. I'm going to continue by going under 2, then over 2, under 1, then over 3, under 2, over 2, and under 2. I am again going to travel on top of my second chord, and enter the knot with an under 1, then go over 2, and under the three blue chords, again effectively going under 6, then go over 3, and under 3, and again I do not exit the knot on the left side, but stop just above my second chord. I'm going to start my next sequence with an under 2, then go over 2, under 1, then over 3, under 2, over 3, and finally under 2. I'm going to again travel on top of my second chord, and I'm going to enter with an under 1, then go over 2, then travel under the 3 blue chords, 
effectively going under 7. Then go over 3. And under 3. Again, we do not exit the knot on the left side. We're going to start our next sequence with an under 2. Then go over 2, under 1. Then over 4 chords. Then under 2. over 3 and under 2. We again travel on top of the second chord and enter the knot with an under 1. Then go over 2. Then travel under the 3 blue chords going under 8. Then over 3 and under 3. We do not exit the knot on the left side. We are going to start our next sequence with an under 2. Then go over 2, under 1. Then continue over 5, under 2, then over 3, and under 2. We're going to go on top of the second chord and enter the knot with an under 1, then go over 2, and under the 3 blue chords, effectively going under 9. We're going to continue with an over 3, and then go under 3. We do not exit the knot on the left side. We're now going to travel to the right side, starting with an under 2, then go over 2, under 2, then over 5, Under 2, over 3, and under 2. We are now at our last pass, and we're going to go on top of the second chord and start our sequence with an under 1. We're then going to go over 3 and under the 3 blue chords, effectively going under 9. Continue with an over 3. Then under 3 and do not exit the knot on the left side. To finish our working end, we're going to go under 2 and place it on top of the standing end of the third color. With this, we have tied our box pattern knot and it does require a bit of tightening and it looks especially good if you place a leather band as a collar under it.
So guys, I hope you got to this point where you have your knot tied. It is not the easiest knot to tie and it does require some patience and after you observe the knot a bit, you will be able to do even more passes in the knot using 4, 5 or even 6 chords which can make a bigger knot. In any case, thank you for joining me in this tutorial and see you next time. Thank you.